So as promised, let me talk about the second thing I think we need to explain about homogeneous coordinates that's important to understand and will be useful, especially when we get to graphics. But if you think about it, we've been using an extra dimension to do translation in the dimension minus one. We did that in the previous videos. If it helps to go back and review those, please do. I, I highly encourage you to do so. So in this case, I originally started out about five, six videos ago with this Bill and Ted, like I've explained. and um, and they can move around in their one-dimensional land, and they're happy because they're using that second-dimensional value. All right? And the same is true from second dimension to third dimension, third dimension to fourth. I've already illustrated that in previous, in previous videos. Now let me talk about the word homogeneous. All right? I remember the first time I heard homogeneous coordinates, I, my, my brain just was like, oh, that sounds so hard to understand. I'm going to turn on a brain block, and I'm going to stop myself from understanding it because it sounds difficult. I think too often as learners we do that. It sounds difficult. It must be difficult, so I'll just block my brain from learning it. All right? Don't do that. All right? The whole reason I made the last five, six, seven videos is to clearly, hopefully clearly, explain why we use these affine transformations, and homogeneous coordinates. Now let me tell, teach you the significance of a homogeneous coordinate. Let's first take the word homogeneous. I'm going to bring up Google here, get that off the screen. I'm going to Google the word homo. Let's see which ones were the best. I want to dictionary.com. Let's look at dictionary.com. The genus, the genus of prim primates that includes modern humans and several extinct forms. Uh, that's not what I want. I want, let's see, combining form, appearing from Greek. Oh, this is, this is good. Look at this. A combining form appearing in loan words from Greek where it meant same. So when I say homo, think same. Same. Keep that in mind as we look at homogeneous coordinates. Now I got, let me, let me get Bill and Ted back up on the screen here. And, uh, Remember, they live in this W equals 1 land, and they can only conceptualize and geometrically, physically understand in their world one dimension. And that also makes it difficult for them to pass each other because they can't. They'd have to somehow pass through each other, which would hurt. All right, but, but they're living on this W equals 1. Well, Ted, he's kind of clever. He sits around a lot and thinks a lot. And he's kind of clever, and he's like, you know... I've got the second coordinate, remember? He's at position 1, 2, 1. So 1, 2, 1. He's at, he's at, he's just floating here. And he's like, you know, I, I, yeah, everybody told me to put this at 1. And we saw the reason why that needs to be 1. But Ted's like, ah, what if I want to work the system a little bit? And I want to, uh, I don't know, let's go to a, let's go to 3. Let's try to work with some integer numbers here. I'm going to push my second coordinate to 3. And everybody in one-dimensional land's like, "Wow, what does that mean? What does that mean? We're only in one dimension. What does it mean?" And unfortunately, Ted, he's stuck. He's stuck in that one dimension, All right? And and so, since his second coordinate is a three, how can we get what that physically means in this one-dimensional line? All right, his second coordinate, he decided is going to be a 3. He changed it to a 3. He just kind of said, I'm going to do this. All right, but what does that mean in this one-dimensional world? Well, let me tell you. If I take this 2, 3 here, and I write it in vector form, I'll use the vector syntax that we use in math. So 2, comma 3. The problem with Ted doing what he's doing is he can only exist in this w equals 1 area. Okay, this W equals one line. So that's fine if he wants to bump this to a three, but we need to know what that physically means in this one-dimensional world. Well, how can I get this three back to a one uh, and, and keep this keep the same meaning from this coordinate? Well, let me show you. It's, it's just like any other math, especially algebra. What if I divide, this is my divide symbol, what if I divide the whole thing by 3? Alright, to get this 3 to a 1, I have to divide it by 3. But if I do that to this component, I also have to do it to this component. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, anytime we do something to one side of the equal side, we have to do it to the other. That's how we say it in algebra. Same thing with these these uh, vectors. If, if I want to bring this to a 1, and I do, then I need to divide that by a 3. That will give me a 1 right there. Let me let me write the result here. That'll give me a 1. 
But then, if we do that to this component, we also have to do it to this component, which will give me a two-thirds. All right, let me draw that here. And, and let me switch colors just to, I'm going to, this resulting vector, I'm going to draw in red. Let's see, it's two-thirds over, so that's roughly right here, and it's one up. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, do you see it? Do you see it? Here's here's this vector. I divided by a three to make this component a one, and it gave me this. Ve well, wait a minute. This vector is. It, it, I basically scaled this vector down. You see that? I I multiplied it by one third, if you wish. I I brought it back down, and so Ted, his actual location in our one-dimensional space, or the dimension that we're worried about, the physical one, is right here. Okay. Does that, does that make sense? I hope that. I hope that makes sense. So as far as his buddies are concerned, you know, Bill, Bill here, he's, let me, uh, we'll do white. Bill, he's, he's chilling at negative one here. We're used to that. But Ted, he's now chilling at two-thirds. Okay? So as far as his buddies are concerned, it's like, hey, you can you can bump that to a three, that's fine, but in our world, in the physical world, world that forces you to be at two-thirds. Right? And that's why we call it the homogeneous coordinate, is the extra coordinate is is basically any any spot on this entire blue vector that represents Ted's location out in homogeneous land. All of the points on here, if you can imagine, point point, 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 or better represented as vector, vector, vector. All of these vectors are the same. There's that key word. Remember I said to remember that key word, the same? As far as we're concerned, this vector is the same as this vector is the same as this vector, because when I scale them all down, it gives me the same location in the dimension that I'm concerned about. Okay, even even this vector is the same, and this vector is the same. We can even go negative, okay? All these vectors are the same because in order to get their last component to a 1, I have to divide by that W coordinate, and that scales us all back down and puts us back geometrically what we understand. And there we go, we're at, we're, we're at 2 thirds. <laughs> okay, so homogeneous. It's, it's kind of like, well, let me... I can have several different homogeneous coordinates, like I've shown with these vectors. Yet, in reality, they're the same vector in that n minus 1 dimension. So I put a lot of energy and time, and I, I hope this helps. It sure helped me to, to explain homogeneous coordinates like this, and affine transformations, and all the previous videos. But that's, that's key important. Homogeneous, same coordinates, several different homogeneous coordinates, all map to the same physical coordinate, if you would. So, <sighs> to do some exercises. Come up with some homogeneous coordinates and do the division. Come up with several homogeneous coordinates that are actually equal in our homogeneous land that will result in the same position in our physical land. And you can do that in one dimensions, two dimensions, three dimensions. You can do, do it in four, five, six, seven, eight dimensions. But really, in game programming, we're, we're either worried about two dimensions or three dimensions. But here, I've done the one dimensional example.